listening to the Live, Live, Play podcast. Hey guys, welcome to the Live, Live, Play podcast. We are back and on the show we have Matt Nagel. Is it Matthew or Maddie? Because you're known as Maddie. Most people call me Maddie, Maddie yeah. yeah. My mom would call me Matthew. If I okay. <laughs> okay, so we're called Maddie. Um, and Maddie is a, a coach, he's an online coach, and we're going to like kind of get into the depths of obviously his his history of where he, how we got here today. We might even touch on like COVID and how it affected. And then we have just another bunch of things. So Matt, firstly, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me on. So um, I suppose like this is coming to the end of 2021. Um, you're an online coach. Was that, were you online before COVID or? Yeah, or, yeah. yeah so um, I've always, even when I was working in gyms, I, I was always quite good at posting content online. So yeah. I kind of laid a foundation without realizing. Yeah. Um, and then about six months before COVID, um, I left the job I was in and started doing fully online and then did some work for a friend of mine, Darren Murray and Tala was doing some part-time work there, but mostly online. And then COVID was honestly like, people won't like this but as an online coach mm. it was a it was a blessing yeah, right? yeah because people were were forced to see that as an option or before it wasn't really you're like why would I have an online coach if I can just go to a gym yeah um which still there's certain like someone's technique can like sometimes it needs in person especially if they're quite inexperienced so yeah. like, there's huge benefit to that but uh, COVID in general was was like a, a blessing for my business it mm. like it grew a lot because yeah, I know we we, we, we we went online. Yeah. We were forced to go online. Um and it was something I, I wasn't it was something that we all kinda of, was always there I'd like to do but never got into it. I had one or two online clients that I'd look after for programming basically, but never got into it. But like what you said it was a blessing for you and I like I agree that COVID was a blessing if you look at it the right way. Yeah. Um so for for us, we got, well, firstly, we, we had to let all our staff go. We, we, we lost half our revenue monthly. And we look like to look at all the negatives, you're mm. like, okay, but we reinvested in the business. I think we spent like 75, 80 grand in reinvestment in the company. We got time to sit back and look at what works, what doesn't work. And we got to reevaluate the, which you'd never normally get the time to do the whole company. And then when we came out of it, we went back in, came out, but yeah. Um, yeah, it really helped me change me as a from coach and business owner to business owner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is where I need to step and where I need to go and to to achieve the goals that I set each year. I need a strong team and I need to develop the team and let them develop the the systems and. I oversee it eventually. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I do. I, I agree with you there. Like, obviously, for you online, that that blew up. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe that yeah, COVID. Like, and obviously, it's not a blessing for everyone because people had some bad stories. Yeah. Businesses went bust and stuff, and other things. But yeah, if you can, you, if you can always take a positive out of a situation, whether it was a learning experience, we never not to do that again, or how to redo it, or. You, Family's more important because you got to spend more time at home. I think that was a really good thing, and a lot of, like naturally, and I think it's an Irishism as well. We we focus on negatives yeah. naturally. We want to. It's easier than looking for the positive, which I think is a big thing. But with your like, and obviously since gyms are all back open, actually, um, how has business been for you? Did you did you find there was a bit of a fall off, or is it still steadily growing in the the, the direction you, you want? Um, no, it's it's still. In the direction I want yep. so um I was doing so when COVID started I had I was doing obviously individual coaching online I'd set up a, a live workout program with mm. a friend of mine Colin Dempsey and we were doing that six days a week between the two of us mm. um, so we shut that down once COVID was over because he has he's a small group PT place in yeah. Newbridge and um, yeah that so that type of style of training i guess it was um that took more of a hit but yeah. we both kind of wanted to shut that down because he wanted to get back in person yeah i wanted to focus on more individual stuff and mm. um, but the individual stuff has been great yeah. so um just uh anyone who was on that live workout program is someone who would loves like classes or loves like 
going to a gym. Yeah. So that side of things took a hit, but like I wasn't too upset. Yeah, because you're you, you did I prefer the individual stuff, and um, just because you can impact someone. Yeah. More and than with regards to kind of your individuals, um, how like do you like? Because this is a question I've always I've never really got to speak to someone that's one hundred percent online. Like, is it every day you're individually contacting them, or is it kind of a groupy thing, like uh, group chats, or like uh, kind of like the way we do with Paul? Um, yeah. Like, how, how would you connect? Because obviously, is it if you get more clients, yeah. the connection rate can get slower. Yep. Yeah. So, how do you go about that? So, um, that's that's luckily where I'm at now. Is that I can't take anymore. Yeah. Because mm. I'll lose that connection. Yeah. Um. So. I, I started a group program with to balance that, but individuals. So, um, when someone signs up, we'll jump on kind of two or three Zoom calls in the first two to three weeks, just because mm -hmm. that initial phase is where people will have the most questions, and then they have a check-in form to fill out every week, yeah. and we'll either do a Zoom call or I'll send them video feedback. So, um, I use like a website called Loom where you yeah. can screen record and also see me on the video. Um, so I'll send them video feedback and say, this is what, um, this is what you need to work on. This is what went well. This is, and that sort of stuff. And then like, depending on the program they're on, we might WhatsApp or I use true coach so yeah. they can message me through true coach or yeah. wherever. And would the majority of them be in gyms doing your program in like a kind of a, a budget gym or just a standardized gym uh, or would you have half a home or i'd or... say the majority are at home <laughs> okay. um, so some of them i think through say lockdown obviously and um, gym equipment it would have been great to own gym <laughs> yeah gym equipment business but um most people kind of got some sort of equipment or some yeah. sort of home setup and um, so uh, the majority of them are at home and the people who i work with are in terms of training like they don't have a lot of time they're three times a week yeah like 45 minutes maybe i have one or two people who might train four or five times but i d i don't have an interest in working with athletes or with people who yeah. have because and it's funny because if you asked me when i first became a coach i think oh, yeah, everyone yeah. was like i want to work with athletes i want to do this and now i'm like i just want to work with kind of normal people who are really struggling to get yeah. up on health and fitness so for me programming is um fairly basic in terms of the like they need full body they yeah. need to train three maybe four times a week some people two times a week um and yeah so that's like it's i'm not working with athletes or i'm not working with yeah. anyone not i think that it. that goes to show because this is a conversation i have where people like they you, and you you see it and it's uh, we'll, we'll actually we'll, we'll go into that aspect of what we're going to talk about today is there is this is the program yeah. that will get you beasted into the <laughs> sexy body that you've always wanted, yeah. no matter your age, size, gender. <laughs> yeah. You're like, mm, okay, I don't know if that's going to be true. Six pack in six and weeks. Six pack <laughs> in six weeks, yeah. It's, take a lot of diuretics and <laughs> yeah. maybe you'll get there. Um, but I, and I learned, I learned this, and I, 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 this is another time I'm mentioning his name is Coach Dan John. Everything works. Yeah. And you don't need to reinvent the wheel. It doesn't need to be this close, uh, closed off, special, shielded wall program that you've got to knock three times to get into. It's like, we're going to get you moving. Yeah. And for the majority of people, if you're moving, you're going to start seeing results because you haven't moved properly before. Um, so like when you, so when people say, oh, well, I don't do online because I have no equipment at home. You're like, well, no, we can, we can still get you going, we can yeah. still move you, and we can still do things. Because if you didn't, the question would be, if you were big into fitness and you were, all the equipment was taken away from you, what would you do to stay in shape? There is yeah. a way to do it. Yeah, yes. you're not going to have a 300 kilo deadlift, but how important is a 300 kilo deadlift unless you're a powerlifter? Yeah, yeah exactly. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And I, I think a lot of people get caught up in, in that aspect of training. Um, but for, for like for you like just could you give us an example of uh, even some of the clients some of the results you got from clients you don't have to name names right like just um some of your kind of biggest wins with clients that would be at home with very little equipment what you've seen yeah and um, so like so the the biggest impact i've had with people um is is more on the nutrition and general activity side of things yeah. so we work out obviously clients work out through like 
resistance through body weight or bands or adjustable dumbbells or whatever um for health benefits more so yeah i very much try to um disassociate if that's the right word training from fat loss where like i want people to view training as i'm doing this uh, because it makes me feel good because yeah. i'll get fitter or healthier and um, and because of obviously like the long-term health benefits yes. where you'll be more mobile into your later years and um, but in terms of results what i found over the last year is um aside from physical results like i had one guy drop three stones so big like you can mm. talk about physical results but changing how people view food has yeah. been the biggest result for me where they are either all in or all out or they're they're being perfect and they're afraid to have a, a bar of chocolate yes. and once they have that bar of chocolate okay i'm done now back to square one so getting people to view their change change how they view food and their relationship with food has for me been more impactful than physical results even yeah. though the physical results have been amazing like when someone sends you pictures of these are my old genes and yeah, yeah like yeah, yeah. Lots of those kind of stories, but um, changing how they view and, and impact in their life. And I think if you, if, you, if you get to the core of it as a changing how they view food, how they view exercise, how they view their health, the other results will happen eventually. For sure. The yeah. byproduct. Whereas you can, you can get someone to lose weight and not change a lot about their lifestyle mm. or their mindset. And then they, they do their six-week abs and they get close and then they they fall off the wagon yeah. because it's not sustainable and i like that I, I'd, I'd have a same a very similar approach with nutrition is that you don't need to cut out like as i say unless you want to stand on the bikini fitness stage you don't need extreme yeah you need smart decisions and enjoy your glass of wine on the weekend or so but if you're drinking wine four or five days a week yeah we're gonna have to kind of yeah. look at that a little bit make some changes to that and uh, all that stuff but yeah no it's I, I find it's, um, and it, it, it is that I'm getting older and that <laughs> I'm getting grumpier, even though I was grumpy when I was young. Um, but when I see a lot of the stuff out there now, um, it just, it, I don't know, it's, I wouldn't say offending me, but like, it's just, you kind of just want to shake them and go, what you're doing, it's not, it's not the best approach yeah. to help people but you're telling them that it is yeah, yeah yeah like i'd rather you be honest and go right this is a, a eight week program and it's extreme but it's extreme eight weeks after that you're you have to figure it out yeah rather than oh it's eight weeks and it's it's going to change your life it's, yeah but then you're going to fall short and then it's all going to come back on yeah and like we've seen it we've seen it time and time again people go hardcore drop the weight they get in shape and then three months later they're bigger than they've ever been what happened yeah, because you're burnt out from training, you're burnt out from mentally trying to figure out your food, and then you're trying to, you start like, yeah, you say you have the Mars bar, and then it's yeah, yeah. the takeaway and stuff like that. Yeah. What would be kind of one of your things in the industry now that would annoy you, or not, yeah, it would annoy you, it, it, yeah. it's an annoying thing, but where do, where do you see like the issues with the industry now, the fitness industry today, what's your kind of biggest hang up? Uh, how much time have we got? <laughs> no, no. You only get this at one. One, yeah, yeah. one thing. One. Um, oh, <clears throat> if I had to pick one, give me like one training and one nutrition or something like that. So training. Well, yes, yeah, both. Yeah. Okay. Both, both. We'll go with training first. So I, I feel like there's still this idea that you have to absolutely beast yourself every single workout. If you're not in a pile on the ground, this workout was a waste of time. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that's still, it, it is swinging, I think. It's slowly yeah. swinging the other way. But that's one thing that still very much annoys me, like this um, coaches who are like screaming at people to push harder, go harder, go home, like every single day. Yeah. And I'm like, this person has so much stress from work. They've got two kids at home. They're not sleeping great. And you're in here beasting them into the ground. And yeah. Just like it. So on a training side of things, that I'm sure you see that like a lot in person, people coming in like we still we still get people and like uh, I'll admit that there was a point where we would have been like years ago I would have been that type of coach like come in let's get done let's go to town. Uh, obviously as I aged and got yeah. older, <laughs> you were definitely uh, just getting older. Re yeah. Reevaluated myself, yeah. but um, yeah, we still get people to come in and like I I'm not dissing CrossFit, yeah, but they've come from a CrossFit facility. And it's like, oh, like I'm not really like we had a guy ask us for our program in advance. Could we send him our ten week cycle so he could review it before he joined the gym? And I was like, no, that's <laughs> that's just not happening. Um, yeah. 
like what <laughs> because he was hardcore and i was like okay you're hardcore that's cool and i get that and uh, like i was but you know what not every day is a like, go balls to the wall mm. like puke your puke your guts up day like if it's a 20 minute like average watts bike test yeah it's an hour it means you should be able to talk to the person beside you for the 20 minutes yeah, yeah. and not and, uh, we like dave uh he's the he's, he programs for fsm and he deliberately puts in like the intensity days and then the slower days and yeah. still to this day we have people kind of like, oh I don't feel like i gotta work out or like yeah but it's it's the compounding effect not the i didn't sweat till like i was like standing in rain effect because sweating doesn't mean you're getting a good workout yeah, either yeah um but yeah no it's um i think we're definitely um, just getting old like because i <laughs> I've done that when I was younger. Ah. I've I beasted myself every day of the week, and then like after eight weeks, I'm like, why am I so fucking tired? What yeah, is going on here? And you just you have to learn that. Yeah, yeah, and it is, and it, it, it it's saying it as the one thing that was said to me about the coach's life cycle is that you'll come out of college and you, you'll think you know everything, and then you'll start about realizing you don't, and you start following one guy or one one company, one brand. And then you're like, yeah, yeah, we're gonna follow this, and this is the this is the mecca, this is the way forward, and, and then you start going, well, there's flaws in this too, and, and it all comes back around to, it all works to a point. Yeah, yeah. With all the based on the person you're dealing with, yeah. and your job as a coach is to figure out that person. But my biggest thing, and it annoys me because obviously I have a, a new baby, is if you're not getting eight hours of sleep, you're fucked. Yeah, yeah. I'm like. Well, my son didn't sleep for four years, yeah. and I had about a year before Riley arrived, yeah. so I'm probably not going to sleep for another four years. <laughs> so you're telling me there's no way I'm going to get into great shape because, yeah. or stay healthy because I can't sleep. I hate that. Well, if you're not getting like, you have to eat like this, and you have to be in bed at this time, mm. in a cold room, I said, I can't, I have to have a monitor on, yeah. which has a light on it. And then my daughter stirs. Like, I have to go get her and then bring her into the room. She has this great thing of waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning wide awake for about an hour. So I have to bring her downstairs because let Susan sleep. Yeah. Uh, and then she'll fall back asleep. And then I'm, it's 4 o'clock. And I'm like, well, there's no point in going back to bed now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll do some work. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, that, that's kind of my pet peeve at the moment. Where people yeah. go, yeah, yeah, quality sleep. And all these good. Yeah, if you're not sleeping like eight hours, I'm like, yeah, what about people that work night shifts? Yeah. And they, they do that because they have three, four kids at home and have to pay a mortgage. Well, are we going to tell them no? You can't work with them? Yeah. You work with everyone because you're trying to better their life, their situation. Go, well, get a new job first. Yeah. Get a new yeah. job. Yeah. And you can come work for me. I'll come train with me and I'll look after you then. I was like, yeah. What? Sleep is kind of the new thing, isn't it? Where, like, I love that people are so much more aware of it. Yeah. But now it's it's like you were saying, like. And it's 100% important. Yeah. yeah. I, Totally, like, don't get me wrong, I love sleep. But when you have a family, it's, uh, yeah. it's it, it can throw a spanner under works and there's that level of uh, underlying stress that's constantly going on. And we've had it here, uh, I've had it over the years when, when someone comes in and I always have to remind myself and I remind the staff is that if someone comes in with a bit of an attitude or just not, not their normal personality, you gotta understand like they have house they well they have something going they have a life they've worked a family someone could be sick uh, the kid could be sick they could have been up all night because um like a hundred and one different things mm. you go get on the floor fucking move yeah, yeah. is the, the straw that could break the camel's back and be like they're like yeah, see you later this is horrible this is what i signed up for so it's it, i think of being a good coach i suppose you have to be able to see that Especially when you work with someone in a, in a group environment. Mm. PTs is probably a little bit easier because it's just you and them. But in a group environment, you need to be able to assess that and then go, okay, you know what, let's take it a little bit lighter today. Don't worry about, don't worry about the, the workout so much. Just, just move. Just yeah. sweat for the 10 minutes and then <clears throat> just, make some, just make some movements and don't worry about the scores. Because yeah. obviously people get hung up in numbers and yeah. scores. And, Again, it's a, oh, as as a, that's a separate rabbit hole. I know. <laughs> I, know. And I love I love having the metrics yeah. to show clients, yeah. but then again, at the same time, like not every day is the is the killer day, the PB day. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna knock three seconds off my time. Was it worth it? Yeah. I could have just done a slower workout and then, like the you benefit feel like of crap, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You just send you outside to get sick. Um, 
So yeah, and the other one, nutrition wise, what would be nutrition? So um, my thing is, I I don't I really dislike extremists. Where yeah. like on the nutrition side of things, if someone whether it's like a weight loss club or low carb or keto or whatever, someone gets results that change their life, which is amazing. But now they think this is the only thing. Yes. Everyone has to do this. There's no other way. And they go about like, um, like taking down other ways and like yeah. telling people, no, if you have to do it this way. You have to do it this way. And that's what I love about, um, like over the course of kind of COVID and growing as an online coach, I have clients who are vegan and vegetarian and clients who prefer to eat low carb and mm. clients who prefer to eat high carb and yeah, like yeah. everything in between. And it's like, it's made me realize what I knew before, but even more so that like everybody has to find what suits them as an individual yes. within the scope of like calories and Keeping it healthy, all that yeah. sort of stuff, eating the right amount of food. But um, yeah, it really annoys me seeing extremists pushing one way. Yeah. Like, this is the only way to do it. You have to diet this way. Yeah, we 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 declined here. She, she educated herself. She became um, uh, it was a form of nutritionist or, or diet. There wasn't a dietitian. It was um, uh, something to do with. It was a natural. Oh, a like natural a, remedy. I want to say holistic or something. <laughs> holistic like that. Yeah, nutrition. Yeah, yeah. yeah something you. something like that. But then she found keto. Okay. Keto's the way. I'm lucky for you. Yeah. It's like and like you say, like some people will thrive on low calories they'll perform better some people perform better on vegetarian because it helps them then some people a vegetarian diet could actually hinder them or hurt them yeah. uh, and we actually had this conversation on saturday when one of our members became vegan she's vegan two months now and she's like oh yeah i feel great and i said doing all this and I said yeah but you were you were doing really well before you were vegan as well and I said, it's it all it all works but you can't enforce that on me i like if you're vegan or whatever for whatever reason, <clears throat> don't like animals been hurt. Cool, you, you do your you. Car <clears throat> carbon yeah. emissions. Cool, but that thing of being well, this is the only way to be doing it. And how dare you do it any other way? You're yeah, so yeah. wrong. You're so wrong. Said, the world, I, like I can't consume certain foods because it doesn't agree with me. Does that mean I'm wrong? If someone's lactose intolerant or someone can't have like, there's <laughs> this is a very we were doing a we were at a sales seminar and a guy we had to do call, um ring people in front of the group which was horrendous okay now i got a call i i, I went first and i nailed my call okay. straight away and i got her husband to sign up as well it was beautiful but she she rang fsm looking to join okay. she wasn't just a lead and kind of just find out information i got lucky okay <clears throat> it could have been any nor but the guy next to her she he got a woman she she's not allowed to eat vegetables because <clears throat> she had crohn's disease and the vegetables affect her and all that. Now, I don't know how true this is because I don't know the research on it. But I was in the phone for 20 minutes with her, like trying to convince her, like, oh yeah, and she's like, this shot can't eat anything. But then, like, if you had a client or a woman that went to, let's say, a, a, a 30 day vegan challenge or 30 day keto challenge, and it's like, oh, I need to eat these foods, she's like, I physically can't. And you don't know anything other than your one discipline. Yeah you're going to try and force that art because then you have to admit that your way isn't 100% the way. Yeah. Uh, and if you're going to go nutrition that way, then you might as well become a religious nut. Yeah. Because all religions, if you don't follow that one religion, yeah. you're going to hell. Yeah, yeah. Except for you've got to accept everyone as well <laughs> and their belief. Yeah. And they all have the same outcome. Be nice eat well yeah yeah you know so yeah. where do we draw the line and I, I i i do sometimes I'll, I'll admit i love having conversations with like those uh true people yeah you know, like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm true vegan true keto yeah. you're really <laughs> gotta put some air sometimes let, let's poke some holes in <laughs> yeah. this so let me ask the question is there an overweight person on keto yeah is there an overweight vegan is there an overweight someone eating that eats red meat Just, just trying to throw that there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, 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 they start thinking, you can see them. Mm. <clears throat> what? That's wrong, bro. <laughs> I love that shit. Um, just drop a bomb and walk away there. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And people did that to me when I was younger. When I was yeah, younger, yeah. I was like, yeah, this is the only way. It's the only way to train. Yeah. <laughs> Swing kettlebells. Kettlebells for life. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Can't believe that. Um, 
So yes, and then with like so. But like, would you work with someone? Then let's say they had a goal, like a bodybuilding goal, like a, a competition goal that they needed to be extreme. Would you then? Obviously, but you, I suppose, you know that that is a, a short term, short term outcome mm -hmm. for a, for a goal, and then after that, things have to be adjusted. You know, it's not long term, but yeah. you would take on someone that. Um, I would definitely take on someone who has a short term goal. So say like my wedding is coming up or I have something in eight weeks that I want to look really, I want to mm. improve my shape for or whatever. Um, I wouldn't tr take on someone who wants to do bodybuilding or step on stage. Yeah. Um, just cause there's a lot, there's a lot to that. And, um, yeah, I just, I don't like it. And, yeah. um, it doesn't interest me at all, but short term goals, I don't, I don't have a problem with, but what I'll always say to people is like, we can we can get you to a short term goal, assuming it's not realistic. Like I want to drop three stone in six weeks or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but but we're gonna do it, and we're gonna develop habits along the way. That yeah. once this eight weeks is up, you'll still have these foundations. Um, but l like now, I don't work with anyone for less than three months. Yeah. Um, so that kind of negates that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I would still like I'm still a fan of like four week, six week, eight week, whatever it is, and. I think it's great to have that focus, but um, the foundations of what you're doing yeah. need to be laying for the future. Yeah, look, we do, like, and I, I see this actually, a lot of people are like, you see them and they go, uh, people that say six week course and all this. We run a six week course. Yeah. And our nutrition six week course is an education of six weeks of how to adjust your food. <clears throat> it's not, and if you adjust your food, you will drop weight, guaranteed. Yeah. And we've seen it time and time again. But we, we, we use it as an education and we do tell people it's like week one, this is what you're gonna expect. Week two, week three, and then week four. Between week three and week four, there's a bit of plateau. Mm. Some people gain weight, some people lose weight mm. uh, in those weeks. It's all part because nothing is linear, nothing mm. is straight down. And then depending on your lifestyle, and we've had people that have been on the program before, and we've had two that we've had to then move to because we don't do really focus on calories for beginners yeah we just focus on tidying it up yeah and then we had two women and we were like well you've upped your training and now we're gonna have to put you on calories we're actually gonna have to now get you to start eating more food and it took about three weeks for her to start eating more food and then she's like oh my god my energy's brilliant yeah and i'm losing weight again i was like yeah see because you it can't be like that it's yeah. a constant adjustment and if you don't have the right support network like a coach an online coach um you you'll make so what uh, if you're not losing weight what's the natural thought process i'm gonna drop more i'm gonna i'll, I'll go down to thousand calories a day yeah 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 <sighs> yeah no or 800 calories and i've seen people go for like 600 calories or that's what is it uh he says to me it's like uh it's, it's a five five and two or something. They call oh, it. yeah, yeah. That's a five, yeah. uh, 500 calories for two days of the week. Yeah. And then I was like, uh, you're, you're that close to just doing fasting. Just do fasting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll get a better benefit from fasting because yeah. your system, your hormonal system is better affected. And just like, it's, and you, yeah, you, you, there's all these different mm. approaches and you're kind of like, yeah, let's, um, let's, What's the safest way? What's mm. the realistic way? Yeah. I suppose for me, it's a realism. It's uh, and now we we're, we're launching, and this is the first time I won't be running our nutrition in January. Dave is we've got a new coach that's going to be helping Dave out, and it's the first time stepping away from that. But still, like it's uh, yeah, it's, you're kind of like you're all trying to get that instant gratification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which doesn't exist. Yeah. You know? So we're back and we're talking about giving people what they need um, when it comes to nutrition. And we were talking kind of there, um, this off the camera while we we're setting up uh, about community and gyms. And that just popped a question to my head. I know we were saying like uh, like CrossFit was the kind of, it was the big hitter that you can love it or hate it, but it brought community to gyms. For sure. A yeah. big way. Yeah. And a lot of people have adopted that. But how... How do you work with a community for online? Like, how does that work with you? Like, I know you're on True Coach. Do you just have a place where everyone kind of can commute or kind of yeah. uh, commute, uh, <clears throat> connect? 
So we do, a, like we have a Facebook group. Is basically, okay, okay. But yeah, yeah. It's a much harder thing to replicate online, mm -hmm. very much so, because especially when, like when, we're, when we were in and out of lockdowns or whatever, like I think f community and like connecting with people in person is something that can't be replicated online. Like yeah. when you're on Zoom and you're doing group calls or stuff like that, um, it's just, it's not the same. Yeah. And I know a lot of on, online coaches like might organize, say, meetups yes. for all their clients, but um, like my clients are, are scattered. Yeah. They're in Ireland, they're in the UK, like they're, they're all over. Um, so as best I can, we have a Facebook group. I do some lives in there. Like yeah. could be like some mobility stuff or, or just Q&A or whatever, but very much for me now, um, it's uh, each person's individual check-in each week. Um, and then pe the people who I tend to work with, um, that's, they're busy and like they're, yeah. they're happy to get their check-in and apply what, what they need to work on and then yeah, yeah, check yeah. in again next week. And um, yeah, so that's something I struggle with, if mm. I'm honest. Um, it's hard to replicate that online. Having been in like similar style gyms yeah. to this, it's just, um, yeah, it's not the same. You can't replicate the crack you have in person. Or, yeah, that's like, what, We've spoken online and we've yeah. already had <clears throat> more crack in like 20 Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. And that, like, so, like I, for people who don't know, like I knew, I kind of met you once or twice at like a competition. Uh, I think you knew Dave a little bit more yeah, yeah, than yeah. I would. Uh, well, I, obviously I know Dave because he works with right. um, <laughs> the me. Yeah. Um, and then it was Paul Mort. Yeah. Where when I joined Paul Mort, I seen you, I seen your name and I knew the name and I remember, I was like, all right, and that's where I was like, well, this guy's doing this. So obviously there's definitely stuff in common. Mm. Uh, and then like we've online, we've like cheered and commented under each yeah. other and stuff like that. And then obviously it was like the podcast because like, I like what I, I, I like seeing what you do. And, but you're with, I thought you were with Paul about two years of, for, for anyone that doesn't know, Paul Mort is, uh, Say eccentric. Yeah, that's one way. Motivator, to mentor. Um, you, if you don't like colorful language, <laughs> you're not gonna like Paul no. <laughs> at all. Um, but yeah, I was put on to Paul. Um, yeah, if, if two, three years ago, I watched it, an ad for him. I was like, oh, this guy doesn't. Yeah, have yeah. Oh, I'm not. This is a, this is a geezer. I'm not following this guy. And then he did a seminar online with a company, another company I work with. And I was like, I'll do his 90 day. It seems to kind of, because I got to listen to him properly rather yeah, than yeah. just see an ad. Uh, and then obviously you were on that. But like, yeah, you're you're with him, as you said, about a year, like same as myself. I think, yeah. um, so I I went I went right through his sales system, basically. Yeah. So I did his 28 day challenge. And the same thing, I was quite apprehensive about like uh, this English guy who talks a lot of shit. Like, yeah. like what? Um, <laughs> but I did his 28 day challenge. I was like, oh, I really like this then went to the 90 day and then yeah. obviously there's a 12 month in a line. So I'm probably, I want to say that was around August, September yeah. of last year. Um, I think so. Yeah, I, I, was, I was January and January, I think, but I never, I did a true, I never knew about the suicide thing. Uh, I never seen his ad. Well, actually when I, after the seminar, then an ad popped up yeah. uh, obviously cause Google heard me. Okay, yeah, 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 on yeah. my phone and <laughs> decided to start from his ads my way and uh i was like all right i'll do 90 days and then i got the plan my planner didn't arrive for six weeks okay and i was fuming because yeah. i was like i don't like writing on pieces of paper yeah same so same, i didn't want to yeah. do it and then i had to then speak to susan about a certain thing which i'd keep very private yeah and I had to sit down with her and go through your your, your goals and stuff like that and yeah. she like susan's kind of like Oh, you're fucking good again. <laughs> fucking god, shy. And, and she's seen what I wrote. And she goes, "Oh, and that's what you think." I was like, "Yeah, that's that's actually how I think." She's like, "You never communicate this to me." I was like, "This haven't told to. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> don't really want to." Yeah. Um, but yeah, I felt like um, and he like he's online. Yeah. You you've actually you went to the last meetup though, didn't you? Yeah. I went to do. They were doing meetups once a quarter, <clears throat> and then obviously COVID shut a lot of that down, and then. Um, a month ago, maybe a little bit more, um, I went to my first ever in-person meetup. Yeah. It, it actually, so during the summer they'd had a meetup and people from Ireland couldn't go because there was restrictions yeah. and stuff like that. So then they put on a day in his office for Irish people 
who couldn't make it. He yeah. said, now travel restrictions are gone. We want to host you for a day or whatever. So I went over to that. And then I went over to the next quarterly meetup, which mm. wasn't too long after that, which had like 100 people or however many. Um, and it like when you when you see him in person and his energy, and so yeah. you're, do you know the way, like if you see someone online and in videos and stuff, and then you're like, no, he can't be like that. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. like that in person. Yeah. He's full of energy. Like he immediately will call you on your bullshit. So the first one was like a room of 12 of us. And basically it was kind of like a mastermind where he said, right, everybody tell me what the biggest problem you're having is now. And he went around the room yeah. and he wrote it down. Um, and he said, we're going to break down each person's problem. And then we'll get everyone's thoughts in the group and we'll, we'll break it down. So like it was real emotional. Yeah. Like people were whether it was family problems or work problems or whatever it is um and then yeah just i suppose it's a bit like that community um thing we were talking about where like when you witness him in person or when yeah. you're in that sort of environment in, in person i suppose who you surround yourself with yeah um it's different like it's just so impactful and um, like the, the biggest thing i've taken from him i think is journaling like you mentioned. yeah like, oh that's, yeah, yeah that's yeah. been a game changer for me. and i remember once i you he, he, he whatsapp me and i know they're they're standardized sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but he says your name, you're like, oh, that's correct. Really. <laughs> you fall for it every time. Yeah. Um, but I remember I asked, I said, uh, I requested a call with him. And he was like, yeah. And I was, I, I thought it was going to be this hour long call. It was literally, they couldn't say it was more than eight minutes. Yeah. And I was saying, um, he goes, How have you been? And I was like, oh, you know, and I was, are you journaling? I was like, no. Last time I spoke to you, you were journaling and everything was going right. You actually told me you felt like you weren't being productive because you hit everything on your list because you were focused. And now you have more time. Yeah. Go back fucking journal. I was like, okay. I also want to increase my revenue uh, next year. I want to double my revenue from my company. Because, right? We'll figure it out. Work fucking harder. And keep journaling. I was like, all right, I gotta go. Anything else? Any questions? I was like, yeah. no, I'm all right, mate. Because yeah. you feel like you're a scolded boy. You're kind of like, yeah, because uh, you knew what to do. Yeah. You just weren't doing it. You were it's... looking for another reason not to do it. And he was like, no, you keep journal. Yeah. Because that's what got you where you are now. Yeah. I was it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. It's funny. Um, <laughs> last week, so um, you know, so the Wednesday, the war room Wednesday or whatever. Yeah. Um, I was on that last week, and uh, he was dealing with someone else or whatever. So on Zoom, I raised my hand. Um so you raise your hand if you have a question or whatever but i put my hand back down and um, while he was answering that question yeah. and i was like oh no look i know what he's gonna say and, yeah. like, whatever and then he finished with that guy and he was like maddie nagel i saw you raising your hand why did you put it down i was like "Fuck!" so i got on but same thing he's yeah. like like you're you're you when you grew your business and when you had the most energy and when you were feeling great this is what you were doing he's yeah. like because i remember you were in south shields and you told me this is what was working he's like are you doing these things i was like no he's like but it, and it, it's I suppose it's like with clients like yeah. it's like that's why they pay us to coach them it's like uh, yeah. I was like oh you're not your energy's crap and um, well like you're only drinking 500 mils of water like that's that's yeah. gonna have an impact <laughs> like so sometimes you just need it and like open. everyone we all fall into those ruts yeah and we go all right I'm not gonna journal today or uh, and then that starts well I'll I've got three days with journal and oh, oh, no, I'm going to just finish the week off and yeah. I'll start on Monday because <laughs> yeah. Monday is when everything happens. <laughs> Fat loss only happens on Monday. Um, all that type of stuff. And like, I, like, you know, you're sitting there going, I need to do this, but you're just, you, you get kind of, uh, I suppose, paralyzed mm. in your own self doubt, self toss, but you know that this is the only thing that is going to change yeah. you because if you're not, and this is, I actually got this, no, I, 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 Paul, as Paul said, I've heard this multiple times, but I literally only heard it yesterday again, because uh, I'm listening to Will Smith's audiobook. Oh, I've heard great things. My partner's listened to it, but I haven't. It's, it's, it, it starts off a bit like, kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, but then it gets pretty into it. And he's like, if you're not, if you don't know all the numbers, you can't understand how good you're doing. And it was all the box office. And he says that can become a problem too. Yeah. Like knowing the numbers too well. But uh, he was like how like how to make you like literally how he made himself the best uh, what's it number one action star or uh, actor in the world. How yeah. he went about and did that. I was like, man, because it was all about like you gotta do A, B, C and you gotta be meticulous and you, you have to follow through it every day. You can't quit. And he even said like Christmas was a time where he he would literally double down on his training and his nutrition 
So he'd start January ahead of everyone else because everyone's getting into shape and he's in January in shape. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to do that. <laughs> like, yeah, once he sat there with, the, with <laughs> yesterday, I was like, yeah, I'll have the chips. Yeah. <laughs> Not well spent. <clears throat> Not yet, neither. Um, he's a phenomenal work ethic. Okay. It but is. I still can't feel him as anything but the fresh prince. You know yeah. what I mean? But it's the, the, when you, with the book, I suppose, with all the stuff that, like, I might, I think I'm two thirds of the way through. Um, but there's a lot of stuff I wasn't aware of before okay. the Fresh Prince, during the Fresh Prince, yeah. and how we got into other things and his kids and he's gone through the stuff with his kids now. And I was like, wow. Like, but again, it's there. Are things like some of the stuff is like that's that only happens to movie stars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you're like stuff that like that happens to everyone. He's no different to anyone mm. other than he was more focused. He just did the work that was required to do. But also how he, when he wasn't doing the work, what happened to him and how, like, oh, obviously, I've got to run on you. The, yeah, the, the, end, the, right. the <laughs> ending right now. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, so I, well, I, I think everyone, I suppose, I like having mentors. Yeah. Because uh, I don't know, my mentoring has kind of gotten more into the business side of things, but I still, like, like educate myself on coaching with the, our kids' fitness, the teens' fitness. Mm. It's, a, it's a big aspect of what we do. But we, uh, yeah, I think everyone needs a coach. I to a point, or someone that's checking in that yeah. you're doing your gig. Yeah. So you can be the best version of yourself to work with them. And I think when people see that, it goes well. I'm not. It just proves that you're not perfect. That you have someone making sure you're holding yourself to the standard that you hold your clients to the standard. Yeah. I think that's a big aspect of being a coach, I suppose. Yeah, do you know. All, it's funny, like, obviously there's lots of bad information out there, but everything you ever want to know is on Google for free. Yeah. Like, anything about nutrition, training, anything, you can find it for free yeah. on the internet. Um, so, as like, as much as you educate people and help them understand nutrition and training and stuff like that as well, like, a lot of people are just paying for accountability. Yeah. They're paying for you to keep them on track and check in on them and make sure they're doing everything that they said they want to do. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, why, like... I feel like I would be hypocritical if, I, if I'm asking people to pay me for coaching and I'm not doing the same. Yeah. And then there are a lot of coaches online who, who won't admit that or yeah. they're like, they think they're, they're portraying this image of I'm the top dog and there's nothing yeah, above yeah, yeah. me or whatever. Um, but no, I, I've had coaches for a yeah. long time. So I, 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 I've had coaches for as long as I can remember. And even like if Paul has his own coaches. Yeah. 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 Um, because you never... <sighs> There's no such thing as perfection. You're all if you're not willing to keep learning, you're missing out. I, I think you're missing out on an awful lot if you're yeah. not willing to keep learning. And I think every day is a learning day. And like I, I have a thing that I I, I, I find it hard to read. I, like I, I'll read the odd book. Yeah. I listen to a lot of books because I just find it easier. Because you're in the car, and you can get a lot, a lot more done from going for a run and some of that yeah. audio books. And just taking a little look at some people say, oh, you need to read a book three times before you get the full information from it. So, yeah, but if I can take some nuggets away from it, I'm not trying to literally become like Atomic Habits. I'm not going to become everything about that book. Yeah, yeah. But I'll take some wins from it. Yeah. And I'll understand things. And if it's a good enough book, I will go back and do it again. Like uh, the, uh, the 10 Rules for Parents Principles by Joe Senna. Okay. That was an amazing book. I've listened to that three times now. Because every time I listened, because it was so good, I was like, I, I know I miss something. I want to go back. Yeah. And I'm a father, and I work with kids, and I want to help them as much as I can. So yeah. then I went back to tour time, I was like, man, this is good. And, like, I don't know, maybe I'm going to contact Dr. Laura Pence, who's the co writer, to see if she could have a podcast. Yeah. I know you'd have to pay Joe to be on your podcast. Yeah. I don't have the money for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if I have to pay Laura, I won't have the money for that. But yeah. I'm, the, park, the show isn't that big yet. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll reimburse you yeah. what it is. <laughs> um, so, kind of, what would be so, like, obviously, we've come to the end of the year and everyone has New Year's resolutions and stuff like that. What's the kind of goal for you, whether personally or professionally, um, 2022? Because I know you're going to have to do your new. Um, your new planner soon, so yeah. you're gonna have to write them anyway. Oh right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you? Do you have any kind of goals, or that you're looking towards coming um, into 2022? Yeah. So <clears throat> this year, um, 
obviously business was amazing and fitness wise we were talking i did that quest 12 yeah. thing so um next year my big thing fitness wise is going to be i'm going to do the world's strongest marathon i don't know if you've heard of that is um, that the what a... so you you do the distance of a marathon with a car yeah. attached to you Ross Edgley. Yeah, yeah, Ross you read Edgley. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there's there's only, that I could find, there's only two other people, so three in total in the world that have done it, or okay. at least that have information on Google about it. Yeah, I'm sure yeah, other yeah. people have done it. Um, so I'm like, oh, that'd be a pretty cool club to join. Um, it'd be, it'd, I'd like to do it as a charity event that would help raise a lot of money. I find yeah. like, this might be an age thing as well, where like, I find if I'm, like doing stuff for charity and stuff like that. That's what fulfills me yeah. a lot. Um, and I, 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 we, I, I, I've been doing that for quite some time, stuff yeah. like that. But I find that when I do, like when I did the ultra, yeah. Um, when I decided that it's going to be for charity, you kind of have to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can pull out with your own, like, oh yeah, oh, I'm a sore knee, I'm a sore. But like, if you're going to do it for charity, then you'll you'll raise money, which is a great thing. But also you're held accountable to that charity because you've said, hey, listen, I'm going to do this. I'm going to try and raise this for you because they're yeah. going to start promoting you and you're like, oh, like yeah. I'm quite lucky as well in the sense that like the people who follow me on Instagram, yeah. um, like whether they're family or friends or just people I've never met, they're quite engaging. So yeah. I posted that on my story maybe two months ago about, oh, I'm, like this is something I might do next year or whatever. And since then, I've had like 20 to 30 messages. Yeah. What's the update on the world? So, so like once I put it out there, I'm not getting away from that. Yeah. Or I'll yeah, never yeah, live yeah, it yeah. down. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Very much so. Um, that's the, that's the target for next year. That's brilliant. That done, and so. does your, your, your missus think that's uh, stupid? She does. Yeah. yeah. She thinks yeah, I'm yeah, nuts. Yeah, yeah, My yeah, family yeah, think yeah, I'm nuts. Yeah. So when I did quest 12, it, it was in a place called Castletown bear, which is like West Cork. Yeah. And we used to go there all the time. Um, when we were younger as a family like that was our holiday destination around ireland or whatever and um, so my parents and my family and all and um, i didn't know they were coming down i knew yeah. my parents were coming down but my brothers and sisters and niece and nephew they all came down to surprise me and my partner was down but um they think i'm nuts they absolutely think yeah, i'm yeah. nuts but um I, I, yeah i suppose i i do it i it'll be a challenge it's a mental challenge yeah. that like i want to see what i do when i get into this place where like like I suppose like the Rocky thing. Yeah. Every life is great until you get punched in the face. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. So um yeah. I th and I think that's a really good challenge. Like I know Susan gives me stick now she she she'll she supports it. Yeah. But she'll she'll Oh yeah, my partner is you, 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 you get it in the neck for yeah. me. Like you're, yeah, yeah. you're an Egypt. Like why are you <laughs> yeah. doing this? Why are you doing this? Like what's the why? And I'm like, well no, was it? my response was why not? She goes, Don't be an idiot. Um but yeah I th I th I think doing stuff like that is for people like yourself, like myself, who work with people, is that if we go and show, and like, firstly, I do things for me because mm -hmm. I want to see what I can do yeah. physically. But then also is that if my clients see me go outside the realm of comfort and push and try, and even if I fail, but I, I try, then it's like well, he does it. Yeah, he he's tried it. Like that means that I can try it. Stephen's just a just a normal guy. He does it, no like just I come in, I do my thing, and see what happens. So I think that's a really good thing. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely. Uh, I need to know that date. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely come down with yeah. my um, coffee and cake, and I'll, 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 I'll sit there and watch it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I you won't, can, I won't see the driver seat. Yeah, I won't be doing it. I seen that video he did. I was like. I pulled a, a Mercedes Jeep 100 meters. Really? Yeah. I don't like where this is going. I just like to leave that. That was hard. <laughs> <laughs> that was hard. <laughs> I found that tough. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, doing a full marathon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Downhill. <laughs> Downhill, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's like, um, yeah, it's a good challenge. Mm. Oh, I have a few. I, I still have to figure out all my goals for next year. Yeah. Um, but I have a few that I want to want to kind of get back to um and there's a f yeah there's a few things that i haven't decided on yet so i won't say here yet yeah um, i might just say it on a goals okay podcast or something. Yeah. um but also kind of looking to the future and stuff like that what would be 
and this is kind of like we spoke about at the start. What's your biggest fear? Either again, personally or um, business wise, like what's your like, and I'll, I'll say mine just so I can give give context to it. When I, I knew anytime we talk about fear to people, and I actually said this with our teens because we tried to get our teens with monthly meeting. Uh, I sorry, every six months we have meetings with our teens and we try to talk about goals and setting. And I always go, What's your biggest fear? and I always say, My biggest fear first. And my biggest fear would be not being the father that I want to be to my kids. Now, there's other fears that we all have, and and, and that's kind of that's the one that always comes to me is like how can I be the best dad in every aspect? Yeah, and I, I'll fall short so many times. I know I will, but I like that is my worst fear of having my kids grow up and kind of not wanting to know me or not kind of be like oh my dad was there every step. He was there for me no matter what. He was tough. He was hard. He was disciplined. But yeah, he th that would be my kind of biggest fear uh, when it comes to when I have to look back on things. I never want that aspect of my life to be the regret. Yeah, um, yeah. I suppose it would like it would have to be personal for me. Like business wise, I don't I don't really have a fear. Like I feel like I'm just in the mindset that if everything was stripped away from me tomorrow, I would just start again. And yeah, that's just pig headedness, stubbornness, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. But personally, I've I suppose I've never lost anyone close to me. Mm. So like uh, my mom and dad, I have two brothers and a sister. Um, like some extended family who I'd be quite close to um, like I, I, so I don't know like I, I don't know how that will affect me or yeah. like that, that's my biggest fear is losing my partner unfortunately lost her man mm. through through COVID and um, like just seeing how that impacted her and then I've never experienced that so my yeah. biggest fear is is losing someone that I really really care about okay so yeah without getting we got very deep there. But, yeah, yeah. That's um, what I said. Because I, yeah. I wanted to, to put that in. Yeah. Um, but, so that's like, that's, that plays on my mind quite a lot. Yeah. And uh, then we'll, we'll wrap it up on this one on a, a more a positive. Yeah. <laughs> this has been a roller coaster. Yeah. <laughs> your, your biggest dream, your big hope, biggest hopes, dreams for yourself or just in general? Um, you want a piece to the world or something? Yeah, I don't, I don't know, to be, to be honest. Like, I, in, in the shorter term, yeah. in, uh, there's, there's a, I'm going to put this out there now to the world so I can't take it back. <laughs> in, uh, I had a dream that I sold out a venue in Nace yeah. that can hold like a couple hundred people and uh, sold it out to speak about like mindset, nutrition, yeah. that sort of stuff. So I feel like that's where I, feel, I see myself heading, yes. doing more public speaking and being able to impact people a lot more. Yeah. So um yeah, in the short term, um, I see that, like, it's called the Moat Theatre, to be specific. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> um, people that watch this and know it. Um, selling that out, that's, yeah. that's a dream for the short term. Overall, um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know. I guess my biggest dreams are just to, just to have impact. Yeah. Like, I would hate to look back on my life in five years' time and think, geez, I didn't really do much the last five years. Yeah, like, yeah. I worked, I made money, did this, but um, I want to create a life that i'm in love with i guess yes. you could say um and like i love my life now and i don't i'm not i'm not saying i'm unhappy or anything but um i would hate to look back in five years time and just think oh like i don't have any memories or do anything and i suppose like you'll know from the journal and magic moments and stuff like that yeah. like writing that stuff down and remembering the things even if it's like oh we went to the cinema and like one of the kids said this and it was hilarious and that may, maybe tear up laughing and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. So, um, yeah, just creating a life that I really love, I guess, is, is the biggest dream. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Um, Matt, that has been a very good show. I'm, uh, as our first show back, um, yeah, definitely. It's that fluid, it? Yeah, it's over <laughs> nearly an hour. Yeah. Um, Matt, thanks for being the show. Thanks for having me, man. Guys, if you sure. like the show, please give me a thumbs up, smash the like button on YouTube, follow us on Podbean or on Spotify. It really helps the algorithm and really helps us grow because um, we want to grow the show because we want to have more conversations like I've had with Matt today um, because... Again, yeah, like you can see that coaches are fallible. Coaches uh, have goals and dreams and fears. And we want to kind of help as many people as we can. So, yeah, um, help support us by liking them. Matt, again, thanks for being on the show. And we will see you all on the next episode.
You're listening to the Live Live Play podcast.